What's up everybody, how's it going? I know I've been away from YouTube for far too long now. It's been almost three months since my last video. Life got in the way. I am back with a vengeance. I've got some banger videos already filmed and coming very soon, including this one. What better way to come back to YouTube than by diving into the state of the tech industry in 2023? I want to look at two things, layoffs and hiring. I did a lot of videos in late 2022 and a few in early 2023, January, February, where I talked about all that was going on with the tech industry, but a lot has happened since. There's been three, four, five months in some of those videos, and so let's jump into layoffs. So layoffs, it's no secret. We have been having layoff announcement after layoff announcement after layoff announcement from companies of all shapes, sizes, colors, and flavors. We've had layoffs from small companies, from big companies, from companies that aren't profitable, from companies that are profitable, from struggling companies, from thriving companies. You get the idea. It seems like every single company is affected. No company is immune to layoffs. To go through a few of the recent examples, we've had Clubhouse, which was super popular in early 2021, mid-2021, which apparently laid off 50% of its staff recently. We've had Lyft, which is not a profitable company, that laid off 26% of its staff and apparently paused hiring or eliminated like 250 open positions. We've had layoffs from big thing companies, again, like the second or third wave of layoffs from them, Meta, Amazon, now LinkedIn, which isn't really Fang, but it's owned by Microsoft, and LinkedIn is just a company that is not you know, struggling right now, but they did a layoff. And then even companies like Dropbox and Shopify that are profitable. They are not companies that are really struggling. Dropbox did say that they're slowing down growth-wise because, you know, they're a mature company, but overall they're not struggling, yet they did layoffs. So of course here it begs the question, what is happening? Is the tech industry imploding? It feels like this death spiral of doom and gloom and terrible news, and I am here to tell you that that is not quite the truth. That is not quite what is happening. The real truth is that basically every single company out there, not all, but most, including the most successful ones, the biggest names in the game, like Google, like Facebook, like Shopify, they all made huge mistakes over the last, let's say, five years or so, but especially the last couple of years, where they overhired. If they were not profitable companies or if they were struggling companies, this was particularly harmful to them. But even if they were successful, even if they were profitable, overhiring, hiring people, whether it be engineers or recruiters or marketers or whatever, that you do not actually need for your business, who are not actually useful for your business, not because they're bad employees, not because they're bad people, but because you just don't need them, is silly to say the least. And so they had to do these layoffs. And here it's important to kind of not fall into the trap of just blaming these companies because you feel bad for the people who got laid off, which is totally fair. We should feel bad for them, and hopefully, you know, they will all rebound and recover and find better, you know, new jobs. But the truth of the matter is that these companies had to do these layoffs. I know that Shopify, the CEO, apparently uh, compared the employees and the teams and projects that he was cutting from the company to side quests in a video game. And although that might not have been the most tasteful comparison, it's exactly the issue. All these companies started doing these side quests, which they had no business doing. Doing. It's like if you started subscribing to five different streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV, you get the idea, and now you realize, wait a second, I'm not watching any of the shows or movies on any of these streaming services. I'm just watching Clement on YouTube. You know, why would you stay subscribed to them? So that's what happened, and I think we are reaching the point where companies, they've realized this, they've done the layoffs, they've taken the band-aid off, and I think we're approaching the end. Rest assured that these companies do not want to perform layoffs. First of all, most of the people running these companies are not like devoid of emotion and empathy. They don't enjoy like ruining families and people's livelihoods. But also they realize that it is also not a good look on their company to be performing layoffs, especially multiple waves of layoffs. For example, at Meta, you know, it's been clear that there's been a lot of uproar amongst employees, like morale is down because of these layoffs. Also to be clear, there are only so many employees that certain companies can lay off. A lot of companies do have 
have a minimum threshold past which they can no longer function. And not every company can sort of do a giant makeover or redo like Twitter 2.0, for example. So I do think we are nearing that end of layoffs. But now let's look at the state of hiring, which kind of goes hand in hand with layoffs. So I have three data points that suggest to me that we are reaching a sort of a promising moment in time for the state of tech hiring in 2023 and in the future. The first data point is going to be my company, AlgoExpert. As a lot of you know, I run AlgoExpert.io, which helps software engineers prepare for technical interviews, coding interviews, front-end interviews, ML, systems design, and we have a few other products coming down the pipeline. Now, our product and company is directly tied to hiring, the state of hiring. If there's a lot of hiring going on, then there's gonna be a lot of demand for our product and therefore we will be thriving. And if there's less hiring going on, we are gonna suffer along with it. Now, we have certainly seen an impact from everything that's been going on in the tech industry. If we compare Q1 2023, the last you know, three months or first three months of the year compared to Q1 2022, we are doing quite a bit worse than back then when things were completely euphoric in the tech industry and hiring in general. However, we still have a lot of demand. We still have a lot of new customers, first time customers, and tremendous usage on the platform, which suggests that there is still hiring and interviewing going on. Otherwise, the platform would just, you know, be completely dead, which is absolutely not the case. And this makes sense. There are a lot of companies out there that are hiring right now, and I'll touch on them in just a second. And so if you're a software engineer who's interviewing at a company like that, you're going to want to prep for your interviews, and you're going to go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, to prep for those interviews. Now, this goes hand in hand with the second data point that I have to share with you, which is this website called trueup.io. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I am not affiliated to this website, but it basically tracks the number of open tech jobs at any given moment, and it's done so since the beginning of 2022. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty grim chart, but it does have one promising sort of aspect to it. Grim because it basically starts out, you know, super high, goes even higher with a sort of like little bump at the beginning of 2022, and then just goes down and down and down and down. Now, it would be interesting to see the data for before 2022, I would have loved to see like 2020, 2021, or even 2019. I think we would have just seen like this huge, you know, upwards trending, maybe linear curve that starts to get exponential, that peaks at this sort of like little hill at the beginning of 2022, the Q1 2022, and then we start to go down, down, and down. But you will notice this little glimmer of hope which is that at the beginning of 2023, or rather since the beginning, since around late January, early February, we seem to have plateaued in the number of open jobs at any given time. And mind you, these are jobs at tech unicorns, at big tech companies like Fang, at startups, etc. And so we seem to have plateaued. It's been like three months now that we've been in the same sort of range as going up and down or like a stable coin. And this suggests that maybe the bulk of the damage has been done to hiring in the tech industry. Now, of course, some of you might be, you know, performing technical analysis on this chart and saying, well, Clement, maybe we are just consolidating before we get another leg down. And that could happen. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's certainly not going to happen. However, if we rationalize about this and we think about, you know, what caused this chart to go down, for example, the fact that virtually no fan company right now is hiring. Like all fan companies, the biggest tech companies out there that were hiring the most have effectively entirely paused hiring or almost entirely, right? That caused a huge dip in this chart. But now there are no more jobs that they can close because they have closed all of them or basically all of them. So for them, which are the biggest players, biggest contributors to this chart, the only way now is either flat or up right? And then you look at a bunch of other companies, which are doing, it's the same thing, right? A bunch of other companies that have completely paused hiring, like the lifts of the world or the startups like Clubhouse, they've paused hiring or they've completely laid off, you know, tons of people and are no longer hiring for a while. And eventually they will probably start to rehire. They might not hire at the same magnitude or at the same speed. So perhaps when we start to curve back up, this is going to go a little bit slower or less steep than before. 
We may not recover to those you know, insane peaks, but we will recover. And then the other reason that I don't think this chart is going to suddenly break down is because all the other companies right now that are effectively keeping this chart afloat don't really have a reason to stop hiring. You take a look at all the companies right now that are doing decently well, you know, the banks, the airlines, the travel companies, healthcare companies. These are the companies that historically, over the last five years or so, were struggling to hire tech talent, either because they hadn't gotten the memo and didn't really realize that software engineering was so important, or because they just were struggling to hire tech talent compared to you know, Fang or these tech unicorns. But now they see that they have this opportunity. They're like, oh, okay, like these other companies aren't hiring. We still need to hire. If anything, we need to catch up on our tech talent. And so they have all the reason to hire quite aggressively right now. So that's why I just don't think that this chart is gonna suddenly break down. I think it's gonna flatten out or stay flat for the next couple of months. And then maybe during the summer or during the, the you know, fall, it's gonna start to creep back up and we will see the speed at which it does so. The third and final data point that I have is a little bit more anecdotal, but it's the data point that there are certain companies in certain industries, and I guess I touched on some of them like banking, healthcare, traveling, but that are still doing well and that are still hiring. Namely, if you remember a video that I made at the end of 2022, I think, where I predicted three big trends that I saw in tech for the 2020s, namely blockchain development, ML, AI, and IoT, Internet of Things, we can clearly see so far that some of these trends have turned out to be true. And here I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. This was not some sort of like genius prediction. But the truth is, like the blockchain industry, whether you agree with me or not, based on asset prices, is doing very well. There's huge amounts of investments and development, like software development happening and building in the blockchain industry right now. And ML AI, I don't think I need to convince anybody. Right now it's like blowing up. And so you can look at a couple of anecdotal examples, like companies in those industries, and you'll see that they're hiring aggressively. Like OpenAI, go to their jobs page, you'll see they have quite a few engineering jobs open. You look at uh, Chainlink Labs, Chainlink Labs is a crypto company. I actually interviewed a couple of their engineers a few months ago and posted the videos on this channel. You go to look at their jobs page, they're hiring tons of engineers and not just blockchain engineers, although they are hiring blockchain engineers. If you want to learn blockchain development, check out Blockchain Expert on Algo Expert. But they're also hiring front-end developers. They're also hiring back-end engineers, infra engineers, because all these companies, while they might be specializing in a niche, they still need these other types of software engineers. They still need like normal software engineers. You know, the ones that we know and love, front end, back end, infra. And these two companies that I named are not the only two in their respective spaces that are doing well right now and that are hiring. There are many other companies like them that are hiring. And so this is my third data point that suggests that there is still at least some amount, a decent amount of hiring activity happening in the tech industry right now in 2023. That's what I've got for you. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form and content. Instagram if you like pictures, and I will see you in the next video.